Lakani and uh, Dr. Vijay Shah will tell a few words. And Lakani, I want to know why it's not introduced in US and other things you will be explained. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Om Lakani is a consultant endocrinologist from Zydus Ahmedabad. And uh, he is a winner of uh, many awards and a regular speaker at uh, most of the conferences. And uh, I had an opportunity to listen him quite a few times and he was always uh, the very best. And uh, I believe he will counter very brave and intelligent uh, disposition by Dr. Meenal, uh, equally bravely and equally intelligently. The stage is yours, Dr. Lakhani. I think and before you. before Om starts, I should say Meenal, excellent presentation and we're looking to a big fight, Om. You know, we have big expectations. Thank you, Madhun. Thank you so much, and good to see you here. Thanks, Madhun. Uh, so I'll just start by sharing my screen. Uh, is the screen visible? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So uh, you know, uh, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, which sulfonylurea is better, glimepiride versus glicolazide. And we already had the talk on glimepiride aspect of it. Uh, let's now talk about glicolazide aspect of the same. Now, let me start first with uh, you know the the last point which uh, Dr. Minal raised. That was about the market share. Okay, uh, if we were to determine the uh, you know quality of any product based purely on market share, I think someday we'll you know have to decide that uh, Maruti Alto is the best car in a country, which is not right. The largest market share for uh, you know, any product is a, a combination of the cost effectiveness of the product and the, uh, you know, affordability and also, of course, you know, uh, uh, quality, value for money and so on, right? But at, a, at end of the day, you know, uh, it, in any country, in fact, you know, the market share of a, a cheaper car like Maruti Alto, uh, especially in India, would be much lower than that of a Mercedes, uh, which I, I'm all, I'm sure each of you will agree with me that Maruti Alto is not better than Mercedes, right? So that's for sure. Okay, so let's uh, you know debate this by talking about the various aspect of the thing. Uh, let's first start with efficacy. Okay, so uh, you know, and any product, you know, uh, I think that one of the I'm surprised that efficacy was not a uh, you know a, a topic which was raised vehemently because that is one of the major criticisms uh, that you know glycolazide is not effective enough, and in in uh, you know uh, that is what is being told. But let me just burst this myth that is actually not true. If you can see from this study from Meloni, uh, where you had one lakh 21,000 patients, okay, not a small number, uh, huge number of patients where you had, you know, these three drugs compared, glicolazide, glimepiride, and vildagliptin uh, as an add-on to uh, metformin. And clearly you can see from here that the uh, HbA1c reduction was higher in glicolazide compared to the other two agents, right? Uh, again, if you see the effectiveness in terms of the same study, uh, HbA1c reduction, as you see, as the time progresses, the HbA1c reduction by week 27 is similar in both the groups, glimepiride versus glicolazide, uh, and the fasting blood glucose reduction is also very, very similar. And what you also, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Mingal talked about is the rapid onset of action. Uh, again, if you see fasting plasma glucose reduction with glicolazide, within 15 days, you have the fasting glucose re reducing in a baseline HbA1c of about 8.5 to 49 milligram per deciliter. And by day 60, it was as much as 87 milligram per deciliter. That is the magic of glicolazide. So glicolazide is, uh, you know, I think we can establish that it's a very, very efficacious molecule. Then let's talk about what we all worry about, and that is safety of a molecule, right? And how safe and durable is glicolazide compared to glimepiride, right? Here I'll counter a lot of points which uh, Dr. Meenal raised. Unfortunately, she told me that it has less hypo and it has less weight gain. And she showed me studies compared with, glic glim with glibenclamide and not with glicolazide, right? I mean, I know that glimepiride is less hypoglycemia and less weight gain compared to glibenclamide. I think that's a very well taken. I think the debate is not between glim glibenclamide and glimepiride. Uh, you know, it, uh, and, and you know, uh, any day I would agree that gl uh, glimepiride is a better drug than glibenclamide. I'm sure you'll also agree that glicolazide is better than glimepiride, right? Uh, that's the point, okay. So you talk about hypoglycemia, I'll talk about data and I'll talk about theory. So first is the data. And you know, uh, thank you, Dr. Meenal for 
uh, you know pointing out to the study that is a that is a guide study and just to tell you you can see the reference below guide study is actually published so you know if you want i can send you the full text of the article right it's a published study now and uh, you can see 50% less reduction uh, of hypoglycemia compared to uh, uh, with uh, you know glycoside compared to glimepiride and 50% is not less right you can make all criticisms for the study but all you can say is that how do you defend 50% less reduction in uh, you know a 50% higher risk of hypoglycemia with glimepiride right even if it's a completely flawed study even then this data is is enormous you know to say the least and let me tell you uh, this data is is not a fallacy is data because we see this in clinical practice and i'll show you from a practical case scenario why glycoside is clearly better than glimepiride uh, you know in a in a real life situation so this is again and remember this is blood glucose less than 54 so it's actually severe hypoglycemia episodes compared to just just a you know mild incidental hypoglycemia and you can clearly see the difference is quite quite remarkable so that is again very clear to say but also you know i would really like to point to your you know this this table where you can see the hypoglycemia across the day right it's not just you know hypoglycemia during a momentary period of time hypoglycemia throughout the day is less with, with uh, glimepiride uh, with with glycoside compared to glimepiride and you can see especially in the afternoon right uh, you can see you know the hypoglycemia look at the hypoglycemia risk uh, at at uh, 12 am in the night right uh, uh, you know uh, huge so huge nocturnal hypoglycemia which goes unrecognized 5 pm in the evening look at the difference right so you can clearly see the difference is, is staggering uh, 11 am in the morning so on and so forth i think there are a lot of you know uh, uh, things to really show that the hypoglycemia risk is is clearly clearly less with uh, glycoside compared to glimepiride but there is a reason for it there are theories for it uh, there are two theories for uh, three theories rather to say why glycoside has less hypoglycemia one is that glycoside is especially the mr form is gradually released compared to glimepiride and glibenclamide so the peak plasma levels are achieved 6 to 12 hours with with glycoside compared to glimepiride which is just 2 to 3 hours after the dosing and you can see from this chart here uh, i circle the relevant points right so you can see uh, glibenclamide uh, the peak levels after 2 to 4 hours and glimepiride after 2 to 3 hours whereas glycoside the peak levels are reached after 6 to 12 hours so it is a gradual onset of action hence everything is dumped into the system and hence you have uh, whereas the duration of action is similar with glibenclamide glimepiride and glycoside which is all more than 24 hours right uh the second difference is presence of active metabolites and you have glibenclamide and glimepiride which has uh, active molecules whereas you know glycoside uh, does not have an active metabolite and because it doesn't have an active metabolite in circulation the risk of pertinent hypoglycemia remains and again i think somebody told me that the only third generation sulfonylurea is glimepiride i think i'll just just kind of bring to your notice that glycoside modified release is also a third generation sulfonylurea right just to sort of and you i can clearly see from this table uh, taking from a uh, you know a very huge review on sulfonylurea uh, published in 2020 so like i said glycoside has no active metabolite in the circulation while glimepiride and glibenclamide both have active metabolites in the circulation what about you know uh, another mechanism and that is using uh, epac2 right now interestingly when a sulfonylurea it is supposed to bind with sur1 but a lot of sulfonylureas also bind with another uh, sulfonylurea like receptor which is epac2 Uh, both of which actually continue to stimulate the uh, pancreatic beta cell to produce insulin glycoside is the only sulfonylurea that does not bind with epac2 it just binds with sur1 and because of this reason uh, glycoside uh, you know if you do develop hypoglycemia you recover from hypoglycemia much earlier because the epac2 binding is irreversible and re uh, you know remains for a longer period of time so you would have i have seen lot of patients in emergency none of these are, are my patients you know and then of course they in future they become my patients because they were given glimepiride and they develop hypoglycemia which remains for 2 to 3 days right they have to be admitted they have to be you know they have to remain under uh, uh, you know a continuous care especially elderly group of patients especially those with compromised renal function and they are given uh, high doses of glimepiride unusual doses of glimepiride and patient comes in emergency with hypoglycemia and i wonder how many of them don't even reach the hospital right that's the sad part you know i i'm so frustrated with the hypoglycemias that we see in our emergencies because of glimepiride with inadvert use of that and i think i think that's really clearly wrong what about weight gain uh, advanced trial right showed that there was overall negligible weight gain in the trial uh, over a period of 5 years there was just 0.1 kg weight gain which is i think quite remarkable uh, for any drug to say not just a sulfonylurea and the guide trial which you sort of alluded to quite a few times the body weight change was 83 to 83.83.1 uh, to 
uh, uh, and in glycolysate group whereas it was 83.7 to almost 1 kg weight gain in a glimepiride group so there was uh, you know definitely more weight gain what about durability of action right and we all talk about you know how long uh, a, a product will last and we know german engineering right uh, uh, european engineering things are built to last longer uh, you know uh, french engineering you know you know this and this all comes from uh, you know all these things come in benefit here uh, the data clearly shows in advanced trial this is remarkable four out of five patients on glycolyzide attained their hb1c of less than 7 and maintained that over a period of five years right for five years they maintained the same hb1c you know that is the duration of the trial clearly and there is a reason for this this is actually comes from a study you can read this again uh, there is free radical scavenging activity of sulfonylureas and mainly this is seen with glycolyzide and not with other su's so basically glycolyzide has uh, you know uh, as a by a pal ring which is antioxidant in nature and we know that the beta cell depletion that occurs as a progressive result of uh, uh, over a period of time is because of reactive oxygen species and that is actually uh, curtailed by glycolyzide and again in clinical practice also we have seen that glycolyzide durability of action remains remains quite remarkable so this is about safety let's talk about the renal benefits i think which you know dr minal did not even talk about the advanced trial actually showed that you know uh, over a period of time there was actually reduction in the microalbuminuria and 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 progression to end stage kidney disease this is remember this comes before you had the recent sglt2 molecule so before sglt2 now we all talk about renal benefits of sglt2 what we forget that we already had a drug which is glycolyzide which in a in a dedicated clinical trial showed that there was reduced cumulative incidence of end stage kidney disease and you know the you can see in all parameters new onset of macroalbuminuria macroalbuminuria there was reduction new onset of microalbuminuria there was reduction and there's new onset of nephropathy again there was almost uh, you know uh, reduction there so what you can i can tell you is that uh, and the number needed to treat is also not bad one in 41 right which is not bad at all so what it tells us is that glycolyzide is one sulfonylurea which prevents the progression of kidney disease and on the other hand when i want to use a drug which is safe in patient with kidney failure sulfonylureas like glibenclamide and glimepiride have active metabolites this is all taken from uh, uh, you know uh, some uh, review article right uh, you need to avoid glibenclamide in those patients with gfr less than 60 very clearly glimepiride needs a dose reduction especially when you are going to gfr less than 60 or 30 glipizide and glicolazide can be used without dose modification between 30 to 60 and gfr less than 30 you can continue to use it with careful monitoring and dose reduction if necessary so this is overall about renal safety let's come to the most important aspect that is the cardiovascular safety <laughs> uh, I, i mean i'm very surprised dr minal does not realize that advance was actually a cv safety study for glycolyzide there is no dedicated cv safety trial for glimepiride all the trials you have is retrospective it is, it is the uh, carolina trial was done for linagliptin it was not done for glimepiride right it's just it's a comparative between a dpp4 and a sulfonylurea glimepiride it is not a compare it is not a dedicated trial for glimepiride alone advance on the other hand is a dedicated clinical trial for a cv safety trial though it does not say cv safety it says intensive glycemic lowering which of course is a cv safety trial this is what you know uh, before the rosiglitazone controversy this is what it was typically called right and remember advance in any any cv safety including your sglt2 inhibitors there will be use of other agents right other agents are going to be used in both the arms right you need to achieve a good glycemic control you need to achieve a glycemic equipoise right in SG, even in in your emparet trials other agents were used right even in your depa ckd even in your uh, you know uh, depa timi or whatever study you want you know uh, any any major you know leader trial whatever trial you want sustained trial all these trials also use other agents in both the arms right uh, that does not mean anything you know ultimately it means that you know you need to achieve glycemic equipoise in both the groups right I, that's not an argument at all but i'll give you one very strong argument right textbook right and we all read textbooks we learn from textbooks right this is the most uh, you know uh, respected textbook in cardiology the brown wall uh, uh, you know textbook of cardiovascular medicine i'll just read out what it says in the last line statistically significant increase odds after multivariate analysis were associated with all sulfonylureas analyzed compared to metformin including pancreatic specific glimepiride except for glicolazide which had no associated mortality signal boss Brownwall is saying glycolyzate is the only one which does not have a mortality signal. I think this is very, very, you know, uh, uh, alarming to say. You know, we are still continuing to use, you know, uh, this study. And this, this, right, is, is a recent study 
published by Zhu et al. in Lancet, respected journal in 2020. Right? This is actually a meta-analysis of various sulfonylureas, and you can. I don't want to show you anything. You can just see from this slide. Right? The risk, the risk of stroke, you can say, is increased in patients with glomeruli. I can clearly understand hypoglycemia is more. 50% more, right? Severe hypoglycemia. The risk of MACE is increased. Risk of myocardial infarction is increased with glimepiride, whereas it is reduced with glicoside. You know, I think this difference is quite, quite, quite very clear in a meta-analysis of 232, you know, uh, uh, 67 studies, uh, you know, uh, reviewed, and you can clearly see the difference is quite, quite alarming. I think there is no doubt, and anybody you ask, you know, it's very clear that glicoside is definitely the better drug for cardiovascular safety, and there is a reason for it. There is a reason for it, right? Remember. Uh, we talked about ischemic preconditioning. Uh, the the impairment of ischemic preconditioning occurs because S the sulfonylurea bind to SUR1, which is there in the pancreas, and it binds to SUR2A, which is there in the heart, and SUR2B, which is there in the smooth muscles. Right now, what happens with SUR2A is that when you activate SUR2A in the heart, uh, that impairs the ischemic pre uh, preconditioning, and that is the uh, uh, ischemic recovery, uh, which which uh, you know is there, and Just I want to show you this chart, right? Again, I want to show you this this table. The ratio of what you see in the uh, extreme right, the ratio of SUR1 to SUR2A specificity. Just look at it, right? In glycoside, it is 16,000. So it is SUR1 specific 16,000 over SUR2A. Whereas if you take glibenclamide, it is 6.4, and glimepiride is 1.35. So the specificity of SUR1 to 2A is clearly less with glimepiride. It is 16,000 less. There is no reason to understand. You know, definitely, glimepiride is going to have cardiovascular risk, right? Nobody is going to do a dedicated CV trial with glimepiride alone uh, in this era. But if it is there, I am sure glimepiride will be out of the market. That 40% market share will clearly go away. There is a signal. There is a risk signal, right? We need to be aware of this, and we need to, you know, uh, consider this when we use it in our day-to-day -day practice. I'll show you some practical benefits. And before that, I don't know if Dr. Minal follows cricket. But I think these two twins are very famous, right? Uh, this pair of twins is very famous. This is Steve Waugh on the left and Mark Waugh on the right. Uh, why I'm bringing this point? Because you know Steve Waugh and Mark Waugh, when they started their career, they started their career in a very similar way. Both were very talented uh, batsmen and, in fact, uh, all-rounders to say the least for Australia. Uh, in fact, for a lot of time, everybody knew that Mark Waugh, including Steve Waugh, knew that Mark Waugh, his twin brother. Was a more talented batsman, right? He was considered in the line of Brian Lara and Sachin Tendulkar at that point of time. However, who had a longer career, who scored more runs in Test and One Day, who is considered a legend in cricket? Steve Waugh and not Mark Waugh. Why? Because Steve Waugh is a better, better team player, right? And he is a better person to deal with for the team. He plays for the team. He plays for Australia. Whereas Mark Waugh has always been told that he plays for himself. uh you know and instead of playing for the for the team and hence you know whose career lasted longer and you know this is what happens with glimepiride the problem with glimepiride is that when you add glimepiride as a part of a treatment regime that's why you know uh, you yourself showed me that when the hb1c in a guide study was higher you had higher hypoglycemia the reason is because when you add in such cases you add a sulfonylurea you tend to have more hypos and hence tend to have more glycemic variability with glimepiride that is what happens with glimepiride glimepiride is a not a very good agent to add as a part of a team right whenever you intensify the treatment on a patient already on glimepiride you tend to develop hypoglycemias this has been seen in lot of cgms uh, you know in our own clinics and and uh, elsewhere as well Uh, and the titration of glimepiride is also complicated every time you titrate there are some people who respond more to glimepiride and hence end up with more hypoglycemia and i'll show you some real life cases of how easy it is to titrate uh, you know this is a young patient who presented to us with diabetes uh, he was on glimepiride 3 mg with metformin 1.5 g uh, his hb1c you can see despite this uh, you know he, he he was of course obese and all his hb1c was still 8.4 uh, young patient 32 year old uh, the other parameters also you can clearly see he was also intolerant to metformin so you know this is a thing and what we did was we started him on glicoside uh, you know uh, sglt2 and so on and so forth uh, and what we did was we titrated his glicoside so you can see he started with 180 uh, you know fasting sugar and then we increased to 1 and 1/2 and you can see by end of uh, almost 15 16 days his fasting sugar went down to 135 after doing this right we did something very interesting after doing this uh, we put a cgm in this patient and this is this patient cgm after the fasting sugar was fixed with a titrated dose of glicoside and you can see 
119 is its average sugar beautiful 96% time in range this is a patient with hba1c of 8.4 right uh, who comes and this patient now on follow up uh, you know i'm sure we'll have an hba1c of course this follow up uh, two three months has not been completed but i'm sure his hba1c will clearly be less than 7 very easily right so this is the practical use of it and most importantly right we talked about why it is not there in the in america i don't care i don't care why a drug is not there in america there are many drugs which are not there in america there are many people who are not there in america right uh, united states is not a benchmark for anything if you want a benchmark for safety follow europe not united states right united states is always influenced by money it is less influenced by people safety right but if you talk about guidelines across the country and you can just check this up on right i am not putting those guidelines there you can just check this every single guideline outside an american guideline indian guideline canadian guideline european guideline british guideline all of these guidelines have the preferred sulfonylurea as triclosan because of all these benefits we saw that is the benefit in terms of cardiovascular risk reduction which cardiovascular safety which we clearly saw over glimepiride less hypoglycemia 50% less hypoglycemia less weight gain better titrability and better long term durability all these factors make glicazide definitely a better better sulfonylurea and it's i think in today's world the only sulfonylurea which is worth continuing to use because of the various benefits it has and i'll just point out before we go into rebuttal also uh, 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 dr minal showed us a lot of studies uh, about atherosclerosis and inflammation just look at those papers all of these are animal studies all of them are animal studies and if i if you want animal studies on glicazide i have hundreds of animal studies on glicazide which prove everything that it is probably you know a uh, 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 jesus resurrected you would say you know in in today's world right uh, that is that is the thing right so i think end of the day we have to move out of those animal studies in the labs and move out to clinical practice and in clinical practice tell me one study where glibiparat has been shown to reduce cardiovascular risk right uh, uh, to the level which glicazide is uh, probably you know uh, there and so with this i'll conclude right and i'll uh, go on to the uh, next stage